right, so today we're in section 3.5 histograms, not to be confused with. Every year somebody says histogram sounds like what? Okay, never mind. That was a bad joke. Um, okay, so histograms basically show us... Uh, Instagram. Yeah, Instagram, yeah. <laughs> Actually, the other night when I was talking to my husband about it, he goes, did you say you're teaching on Instagram? And I'm like, no, histogram. <laughs> anyway... It's not anything to do with Instagram, I promise. All right, it's totally different. Um, so a histogram will just show us the frequency um, of numbers within intervals. All right, so we're going to look at the first example, making a frequency table. I want you to draw a, um, a uh, rectangle on your papers, please, and divide it into three columns, intervals, tallies, and frequencies. And I'm always going to give you the intervals. All right, so go ahead and write down these intervals. On page 130, underneath example one, it gives us a science example. It says that the number of named stars in a group of 34 constellations are listed below. And it wants us to make a frequency table of this data. So what I need to figure out is how many numbers fall within each one of these intervals. All right, so I'm going to look at the very first number. The very first number is a what? It's a seven. So which interval would that fall into, do you think? Four to seven. So I make a tally mark in four to seven. All right, so it's important that you keep track of where you are in the data set. You don't want to lose your place. If you do lose your place, count how many tallies you've already made and then count that many numbers into the data set, and that'll help you figure out where you left off. All right, so seven is the first number. Then what's my next number? Five. So that goes in the same interval. What's the next one? Four, so again, goes in the same interval. What's the next one? Ten. So which interval would ten go in? Eight to eleven. What about the next one? Five. Four to seven. And then seven. Four to seven again. Then two. So where does two go? Zero to three. So I want you to pick up on this next number, the six, and I want you to go ahead and finish the tallies for the rest of this uh, data chart, and we'll check them in a second. Okay, so let's uh, keep going, all right? So once we kind of fill in, and if you haven't already finished, that's okay. Just go ahead and fill in the rest of the chart. All right, so there are 14 stars, or 14 constellations have between 0 and 3 stars. 9 have 4 to 7. Uh, 7 have 8 to 11, and 4 have 12 to 15. So um, on your homework tonight, it's going to ask you to make a conclusion about one of the histograms. Uh, what conclusion can we make about this, um, this data set? What do you think? What conclusion can we make? Anybody have any guesses? Deja? Um, yeah, I would say, you know, out of 34 constellations, that's, you know... That's almost half, all right? So I'd say more constellations than any, um, uh, more constellations have zero to three, between zero and three named stars than the other uh, groups or the other intervals. Just something along those lines. Basically, you're looking for where the numbers are clustered, okay? So that'll help you on your homework question. All right, so now I want you to get out a sheet of graph paper, and we're going to set up a histogram uh, and we're going to graph this frequency table on our histogram. Okay, so the first thing we do is we set up our intervals across the bottom. Intervals always go across the bottom. Then our frequencies go in the vertical column. Well, what do you think our frequency should be? What was the lowest um, number in our frequency? No, what's our lowest one? Four. What's our highest one? Fourteen. So I'm going four to fourteen. That's not really a huge range. All right? So it doesn't make sense to go by fives. What would you go by? Twos. I'd go by twos. Ones is a little much. All right? So I'd go by twos. Leave a little bit of space in between and go ahead and increase your um, frequencies by twos and then draw your grid lines. 
Okay, so now when I draw my columns, okay, I need to make it really wide so that the right um, line, you see this right line right here, so that that line is about halfway to the next interval, all right, because each interval needs to touch. Do you see how they're touching? They're sharing that common uh, side to the column, and then you need to shade them in. All right, so here we're just plotting or graphing the intervals, each one of the intervals. Now you can go back and make them darker. You can trace them just so that it pops a little bit better. But this is how you do a histogram. What's important, guys, is that each uh, column is directly above the interval. How do you make that happen? You make them nice and wide because it has to be touching. If your columns are not touching on the histogram, you are definitely going to lose points over that. They have to be touching. So make sure that you make them nice and wide. This right uh, side right here needs to be about halfway in between each interval. All right, and that'll help. Okay. Oops. So now we're going to look on the bottom of page 131. And you're going to make a frequency table of this data. All right, so remember that I will give you the intervals, okay? So you have number of words a student is typing in a class that they can type per minute, okay? So you're given a list of numbers. I believe it's 17 numbers. Um, and you're going to count um, basically which numbers fall in which intervals. So just start on the very first number and you're going to plot that one in whatever uh, category it falls in, whatever interval. So go ahead and make your tallies for all of those numbers and then write your frequencies and we'll check it in a minute. Alright, so how many numbers fell in the interval of 16 to 20? Two, very good. What about 21 to 25? Four. Did you get four, Mackenzie? Okay. Are y'all done? Xander, are you done? No, not yet. Alexis, you're still working? Okay. What about 26 to 30? How many? Four. Four. What about 31 through 35? Five. Five. What about 36 through 40? Two. Two. Okay, so now we're going to make a histogram. All right, so change your frequencies if you got any of them wrong. Now we're going to make a histogram. What goes on the bottom? Is it frequency or intervals? Intervals go on the bottom all the way across. We're going to write each of our intervals. And then our frequency goes uh, going up. Now, what should our frequency be? What, what should we go up by? You think once? I mean, guys, it's only up to like five. Right? It doesn't really make sense to go 0, 2, 2, 4, 6. I mean, that's not very many at all. So I definitely go up by 1s. Do your grid lines. All right, and go ahead and plot your intervals. Make sure it's nice and wide. Make sure you fill them in with a different color. Um, and make those borders look nice and uh, clear just because your columns are going to be touching and you don't want it to look like a big blob. All right, so you should have just plotted your columns all the way across and shaded them in. Does yours look like that? All right, now the main thing I want you to see here is make sure that the column is wide enough that it is actually above the interval, okay? That's, I think I already said this, but I just want to make sure you understand. You don't want all the columns smashed together and then your intervals go even farther out, okay? So you want the column directly above the interval. You do that by making sure it's wide enough that that far, that right side of the line goes about halfway between uh, the two intervals, all right? So you should look something like that. Um, and that's everything you need to know for this lesson.